Well, good day there, everybody. This is Joe Van Cleef, and today I'm going to talk about some experiments I've been doing with making direct positive black and white prints. Stay tuned. So many of you who've been watching this channel for a while and reading my blog are aware that I've been uh, dabbling in uh, paper negative photography, which is kind of a form of large format photography where instead of using sheet film, you're using black and white photo paper as a negative material, light sensitive negative material. Here's an example of a uh, paper negative that uh, was made in a pinhole camera, but you, you get the idea. It's a, you get a black and white and gray scale image on a piece of photo paper. So, uh, this has been a lot of fun over the years and the, one of the reasons, one of the main reasons why I like using photo paper as film is because it's a lot cheaper than, than film itself. You can handle it under red safe lights when you're processing it in the dark room, so it makes it easier uh, that way. And it doesn't show the dust nearly as badly as, as transparent film does. So those are just three easy reasons right there why, uh, why paper negatives might be attractive to you as an alternative creative process. Now, a few years ago, however, the company Harman Ilford, uh, Harman Technologies, came out with a new product, and that was Harman's Direct Positive Paper. And what Harman Direct Positive Paper is, is a, uh, it is the double weight fiber-based print paper that you would use in the darkroom to make fine gallery quality black and white prints with a direct positive emulsion coated onto it. Now, what direct positive emulsion is, is, you load the paper into a film holder and put it in a, a large format camera and you, you expose it as you would film. And then you process it in conventional print chemistry, developer stop bath fixer, and it comes up with a positive image, a one of a kind positive image. And let me show you an example. I'm gonna take it out of the sleeve because the glare from the lights makes it hard to see. But here's just one example of a direct positive image. This is a trellis in my uh, yard, in my garden. It was kind of a test shot, but this is a double weight fiber-based paper, so it's rather stiff when it dries. It's difficult to get it to dry without curling, uh, so you have to take some precautions when you're drying it to tape it down to a sheet of glass. But that is direct positive paper. It's a wonderful me medium to work with. It's like a wet Polaroid, if you want to think of it in those terms. It's a one-of-a-kind image you expose right in the camera, but you have to wet process it to get the final print. Well, it turns out that you can't buy Harman direct positive paper right now. And the reason why is because Harman Ilford are having manufacturing issues over in England. And so I have a small stash of paper remaining of the Harman direct positive paper that I don't want to use because it's in scarce supply. Well, there is an alternative and it, this has been done for a lot, a lot of years and it's called reversal processing. Now what reversal processing is, is if you remember those old-fashioned photo booths, not the new ones that use digital cameras and digital printers, but the actual old-fashioned photo booths that spit out a little strip of black and white pictures. Uh, those used black and white photo paper, but it reversal processed the paper to make a direct positive image onto photo paper. And this is what I've been interested in exploring. Now, one of the problems with doing reversal processing traditionally has been that the, one of the main chemicals that you have to use for reversal processing is a, a, a chromic acid based bleach, like potassium dichromate or something like that. These materials are very toxic uh, just by skin contact and they you don't want to dispose of it in your waste stream in the water supply or anything like that. They're very toxic to biological organisms. So it's kind of presents a, a challenge in, in safely handling and disposing of the, of the waste from this process if you use a chromic acid based bleaching method. And so I have always been a little leery about doing it. And there, the other alternative was there is another process, another way of using sulfuric acid. But sulfuric, sulfuric acid has its own set of problems, mainly that it, it undergoes exothermic reactions when it's mixed improperly with other things like water, and so you can have really bad consequences like acid burns and explosions and things like that if you do really dumb things with it. So 
not really something I wanted to do around the house, especially with, with the young grandkids around. So I always held off in doing that. Well, as it turns out, um, I recently found out that somebody has figured out how to make a bleaching agent for reversal process using hydrogen peroxide and citric acid. Okay, so before we get into my experiments with doing this uh, reversal processing of black and white photo paper, let me show you a really simplistic way how reversal processing works. And so I'm gonna draw for you kind of a cross section. And so we'll pretend like this is the paper support. This is the thickness of the paper. And you have a gelatin emulsion that's coated on the paper and you have silver halides suspended in the gelatin emulsion. And silver halides are light sensitive molecules. Uh, and so let's say you've exposed this theoretical piece of paper and this half of the, of the paper was exposed to light and this half over here wasn't. So it represents some kind of an image where there's a light part and a dark part of the image. The, uh, parts of the emulsion that were exposed to light, the silver halide molecules are now sensitized and when you put them in the developing agent, the silver molecules will turn into metallic oxidized silver. So they turn into black little crystals and uh, grains and it makes this part of the gelatin opaque. It makes it look dark just like you would see on the dark parts of a paper negative or a print. So at this stage in the game, you have uh, part of the paper that received light has turned dark and the part of the paper that did not receive light is still white colored because the gelatin is transparent and you're seeing the white paper base through it. So the reversal part of the process comes into after the developing happens and before you fix it, what you do is you put it in this bleaching agent. And what the bleaching agent does is it selectively attacks only metallic silver. It doesn't atta attack the silver halides because those silver molecules are still uh, connected or attached to the halides. So the bleaching agent goes in and attaches to the silver molecules and bleaches them white or light colored. So now what was dark is now light. Now, the next step is you fog the whole paper. You expose it to bright light. So there's a light bulb here, and it's, you fog the paper with a bright light. And then you develop the paper again. And so the parts of the image of the emulsion that originally did not receive developing or did not receive exposure and therefore didn't develop, now they're going to develop and they're going to turn real dark because you've fogged it with light and then you developed it again. And what you end up with is an image where this part of the, of the emulsion that, that was the dark part of the emulsion in terms of the image is now dark. And this part of the uh, emulsion that was corresponding to the light part of the image is light because it's been bleached. And so it is a positive image. The light corresponds to the light, the dark corresponds to the dark. So that's an overly simplistic idea or representation of how reversal processing works. Okay, let's get to how does this process work? So the first step in this process is developing the paper. And we're going to use my standard Ilford multi-grade uh, liquid paper developer diluted 1 to 15. Same kind of dilution that I would use for a paper negative and you develop that for roughly a minute or two, a minute and a half, two minutes. And then uh, at that point under the red lights it looks like a paper negative. Um, and then you take it out of the developer, you rinse it quickly to rinse off the residual developer so the pH is more like neutral. You could also use a mild stop bath and acid, uh, acetic acid or vinegar at this point. And from there you put it into the bleaching agent. Now, the traditional bleaching agent used in reversal processes, as I indicated earlier, was a, a really toxic uh, uh, chromium uh, acid-based uh, uh, solution. But this new process that I uh, discovered is uh, the person who developed it is uh, recommending a 9% concentration of hydrogen peroxide solution mixed with citric acid. And citric acid is a powder that you can get at health food stores and whatever. And so um, 
hydrogen peroxide, the kind of peroxide you buy in the drugstore for topical use on your skin, is only a 3% concentration. So we need at least a 9% concentration. So you have to find a stronger uh, source of hydrogen peroxide than just drugstore topical peroxide. And so this was the tricky part. And what I ended up locating was a local health food store that sells 35% uh, concentrated hydrogen peroxide. And this peroxide is used uh, in what's called oxygen therapy. Um, I don't advocate oxygen therapy. I don't really know much about it, but it's people take this concentrated hydrogen peroxide. They take a medicine dropper and they put so much in water and they, they ingest it as a, as a form of therapy. I don't know if it works. I don't, I'm not advocating it, but I'm uh, using the local availability of 35% concentrated hydrogen peroxide as a source of finding this, this material that I can use for my photographic process. So I was able to locate um, a, a local supplier of concentrated hydrogen peroxide and of course citric acid is readily available. And uh, so you mix that into your into a bleach a bleaching solution that you use. Um, I bleach uh, the experiments I did this week. Uh, I did anywhere from two minutes to five minutes to ten minutes in bleaching the print. And then from there, you uh, rinse the print, and then you can turn on the lights, and then you fog the paper for several minutes with a bright light, and then you take it back and develop, stop, and fix as normal, and you end up with a positive image. Okay, let's talk about safe handling of hydrogen peroxide. Okay, so when I went to my local health food store and located this uh, source of concentrated hydrogen peroxide, they have it stored in a refrigerator. So keeping it chilled in a refrigerator um, enables it to be less reactive in case there is a leak or whatever, and it also enables it to last longer. The shelf life is a lot longer because of the lower temperature. So if you've ever had any experience with drugstore topical hydrogen peroxide, you'll know that if you get a little bit on your fingers, it'll make a turn your skin kind of faintly white color like it's bleaching it. 3% concentration is not really dangerous, but this stuff is dangerous. This is a concentrated solution. This is a strong oxidizer, and it is a strong corrosive, and it is incompatible with many solvents and many flammable materials. It's essentially the oxidizer you would use in rocket fuel. So it's not as toxic. It's not toxic at all, but it is dangerous as an oxidizer, and so handling this stuff, you got to be real careful. So what I'm interested in doing is making this as a sustainable alternative process, safe, sustainable, that you can do at home. And I'm going to try to help you guys understand how to safely handle this. So I keep this material in a refrigerator, cooled down when I'm not using it in the darkroom. And I mix this solution, I dilute it down to my working concentration for my bleaching agent. I, I mix it with water, and only then, after it's been diluted, do I add the, the uh, citric acid powder to make the bleaching agent. So let's talk about safe handling of hydrogen peroxide. So what I wanted to do with this project is find an inexpensive and sustainable way of keeping yourself safe while you're handling this concentrated hydrogen peroxide solution. And the real danger is getting it on your skin. You want to protect your eyes and your skin. Um, the easiest way to protect your eyes, of course, is just to use some safety glasses. You can get safety glasses at the local hardware store for $5 or whatever. But um, the danger to your skin is more than just your eyes. You don't want to get it on your face or your hands or any part of your body. So what you really need, um, actually, is a face shield. And so what I found, there is a regional industrial supply company in the United States called Granger Industrial Supply. And Granger Industrial Supply, if you don't have one in your local town, you can get on their website and you can order this stuff um, through their website. So first of all, I got this kit. This is a face shield kit. And you basically put this together and it is a clear face shield you put on your head and it protects your face. The second thing I got is a chemical gown. 
And the third, and these are $8. This uh, face shield is $25 and the gown is $8 roughly. They're $8 to $10. And then also you want to protect your hands. Now you can use um, just regular um, latex gloves or nitrile gloves that you buy at the hardware store or the drug store. <laughs> but you can also use the these kind of kitchen gloves, these thicker kind of kitchen gloves for you doing the dishes, these are basically the same kind of material that you would buy in more expensive chemical uh, resistant gloves. And you could go spend $20 at an industrial supply place for chemical resistant gloves. You can use kitchen gloves. They're essentially the same material. So um, I would recommend using either those kitchen gloves or using your nitrile or latex gloves on your hands. Use a face shield and use a, a, a sleeved uh, acid resistant or chemical resistant kind of, uh, of a gown. So let's put, I'm going to put this uh, face shield together and show you the gown here. Okay, so this is your $25 face shield assembled. It comes in again in a plastic bag. It's a kit. You put it together, little screws, hold it together like this, and you have a face shield that is going to be protective against splashes of hydrogen peroxide. So the danger with this uh, particular process in handling these chemicals is really handling the concentrated 35% peroxide. Um, once you dilute it down, it's less hazardous. But in the, in the mixing of this chemical and diluting it, you, you really want to protect your skin. So I would recommend this is a $25 investment. This, is, this will last you a long time. And you can buy replacement clear face shields uh, to, re to replace if you get them scratched or whatever or marked up. So this is a good investment right here. This is w well worth your safety. It's an investment in your safety. Okay, the next item that you're going to need to protect yourself against splashes is to protect your front torso, your arms, down to your legs. And so you can buy these acid and chemical protective gowns. And they, like I say, this one is less than $10. And it is plastic. And it has button fasteners that button up. And it has arm sleeves that you put your arms through like this. And this is going to protect all of your, um, the front of your body, your arms and everything against splashes. So basically wearing this along with your, your gloves, you're going to be plenty safe when handling this 35% hydrogen peroxide. And again, this total cost of the face shield and the gown is, is less than $35. And it is uh, an investment that you should really consider making. If you want to make this a, a hobby, an avocation, a pastime for your creative uh, photography, uh, you really need to consider being safe with this material. Again, it's not as, as toxic as chromic acid, but it is a strong oxidizing uh, risk, right? And it, also a risk of flammability if you get it mixed with the wrong stuff. So in case you have some splashes or something exothermic reaction happens, which won't happen with this process if you follow it, but you want to just be safe. And this material will last you a long time. So not to be overly cautious, but you really do need to consider the safety of this when you're handling it. I think it's a reasonable cost. $35 is a reasonable cost for this uh, safety equipment. So I am tray processing 4x5 sheets of my uh, photo paper. And I'm using little three-drawer cube stack. And a reasonable volume of chemical to use is somewhere around 300 milliliters, uh, three tenths of a liter. And so the original formula that I got off the internet for this bleaching agent was a 9% solution of hydrogen peroxide in a 300 milliliter volume is what I'm using with uh, citric acid. And what I ended up using is 77 milliliters of the concentrated hydrogen peroxide mixed with water to make a 300 milliliter volume. And only after you've diluted the peroxide down to the 9% concentration, then you, you put in 
two teaspoons of citric acid powder. Thoroughly stir it up until it's mixed and then pour it into your tray and you're ready to go. Um, at that point, at a 9% concentration, it's not going to ne be nearly as dangerous and you can pretty much be safe to handle it just with gloves, right, in case there's any splashes. Um, so let's talk about my uh, initial results with this process, okay? So I showed you earlier what a Harman Direct Positive print looks like. Uh, this is a good example of one right here of my trellis. And here is the result of my reversal process. And there it is right there. So this is the same trellis and there is a little decorative uh, motorcycle sprocket gear whatever with a chain I have it hanging on my on my uh, trellis there out in the backyard but anyways this is uh, one of the first tests I did with this new process now what I discovered my initial uh, test with this proved that the um, the highlights in my initial prints weren't light enough and I had to do two things to make this image successful. First of all, this is grade 2 resin coated photo paper that as a paper negative I normally rate at a speed of about ISO 12 but this reversal process needs a lot more exposure and so I'm using an ISO of 1.5 roughly. Now my light meter only goes down to an ISO of 3 and so what I do is I meter the scene for ISO 3 and whatever exposure it uh, recommends. I'm using the lens on this camera wide open at f5.6 and so whatever the shutter speed is, for instance a 30th of a second, I'll simply open it up uh, the shutter speed one stop slower. So I used a 15th of a second instead of a 30th and that gives me ISO 1.5 instead of ISO 3. I'm having to do that roundabout because my meter doesn't go down all the way to ISO 1.5, my new meter. So ISO 1.5 and then um, I'm uh, using what I dis discovered I really needed to do is I needed to use a higher concentration of hydrogen peroxide. And so instead of using a 9% solution, I'm using an 18% solution. So how that works out, it's actually really easy, is you take, I'm going to make a 300 milliliter volume. And so I'm going to take 150 milliliters of the concentrated 35% hydrogen peroxide and I'm going to mix it into an equal volume of water. So 150 milliliters of the peroxide into 150 milliliters of water that gives me about an 18% concentration at 300 milliliter volume. And then into that volume I'm going to add two teaspoons of this uh, citric acid powder, stir it up, and that was my working solution to achieve this image right here, this positive print. Um, when I when you remove the the print from the developer, of course, it looks like a negative image. It looks like a conventional uh, paper negative, but because you've given it a lot more exposure, it looks really dark. It looks really overexposed. When you put it into the developing or to the bleaching agent for anywhere from two to five minutes at this 18% concentration and you take it out of the bleaching agent, I rinse it under water, of course wearing gloves, protective equipment. What I found was that it looked like um, part the highlights were already reversed. They were already bright instead of being dark as a negative. So the highlights were already bleached white, but there was this odd kind of a brassy colored mottled appearance on top of everything. And then I exposed the print to a bright source of light, basically a, uh, a large uh, daylight balanced uh, LED light bulb. Uh, an incandescent bulb will work or fluorescent, compact fluorescent will work, but I basically kept it within about, about four to six inches away from the bulb and I basically set it there for about a minute and just let it flood with light. And then I put it back into the developer and almost immediately, in a matter of about 10 or 15 seconds, the paper starts to get dark and what was light goes dark and those bright areas stay bright and all that brassy color goes away and you end up with a wonderful positive image. The, whole, the process, that second developing step, looks a lot like if you've ever seen 
uh, tin types or wet plate collodion, when they put it into the developer and they put, then they put it into the fixer and it kind of turns positive all of a sudden, that's what looks like is happening all of a sudden. In a matter of about 15 or 20 seconds, it'll turn positive. And then you, you simply stop it and fix it as you would a normal black and white uh, print. And this is what you end up with, a wonderful little direct positive, unique, one-of-a-kind picture. Now, this is still an experimental process for me. I'm still tweaking the process, but one of the things you'll notice differences between the Harman direct positive paper, which is fiber-based, and the resin-coated uh, hand-processed reversal thing, is you'll notice the highlights on the Harman paper are much brighter. Part of this has to do with in the papers, they use a, a whitener, a whitening agent in the white paper itself, in this kind of paper, that brightens it up. Um, what's happening in my reversal processed paper is that the parts of the image that received a lot of exposure that get bleached out, it doesn't bleach it totally transparent. You're not seeing completely the, the paper, underlying paper support. So the emulsion in these bright areas is sort of cloudy white because those molecules still have silver in them, but they're bleach silver. So you don't have the whiteners in the paper showing through, and so it doesn't look quite as bright. You need a little bit more illumination to view the print. So I'm, I'm using a couple bright video lights here, but uh, so under, under good illumination, it looks like a really good print, and it, it's very much comparable to the Harman paper. But if you were to look at this under more like dim room lighting without any direct light, it looks a lot darker. But that's just because you're not really seeing the paper whiteners uh, activating uh, and reflecting the light as it does with a normal print. But it's a really interesting process, and um, I'm really satisfied thus far with the results I've got. Now, I am tempted. Um, this one... I believe I used the bleaching agent for two minutes, but because uh, one of my goals in this is to try to reduce the overall processing time to make it as manageable as possible. So I only bleached it for two minutes, but I think if I left it in there maybe closer to five minutes, four or five minutes, the highlights probably would, might get even brighter than they are. But this is my initial foray into this, uh, into this uh, reversal process of using photo paper to get direct positive prints and again a $35 investment in safety gear is well worth it I think if you're going to be working with these materials full time or at least as a hobby you can reuse these this face shield and the, and the chemical gown over and over and over again uh, again use your kitchen gloves or your latex or uh, your um, nitrile gloves to protect your hands and you'll be safe but uh, the other thing I would say as a precaution is when I was mixing the concentrated hydrogen peroxide solution, I was used, doing it out of doors in the back porch. Uh, in case of something, worst case scenario, uh, something happened, I splashed it, spilled it, it got on something incompatible and maybe had a reaction, a thermal reaction, I wanted that to happen outside, not in the house. And the other thing to think about is if you have these chemicals on a table, and they spill. You have your gown on you that'll protect you, but think about your feet. So don't wear sandals or tennis shoes. Wear some hard leather shoes just to protect yourself. Wear some full long pants. Don't wear shorts and don't have your legs exposed. But overall, I think it's a really safe process and I think it is really a good alternative to using the chromic acid uh, bleaching agents that they used to use in the old uh, reversal processes and uh, so this is my new foray into this new way of doing direct positive prints. I hope to slowly be able to improve the process. I might even consider increasing the concentration of peroxide from 18% to maybe 20% or a little bit higher, but I don't want to get it too concentrated because it, it could get a little bit more uh, uh, risky to handle. And this brings to light um, sometimes Sometimes things happen that you don't really anticipate. Um, when I, after I did this print yesterday, my bleaching agent, I had only used it for two prints and I knew it was still good and so I wanted to save it. So I had a brown glass bottle. I poured it via a funnel 
a plastic funnel into the brown bottle and I filled it up pretty much all the way and I capped it. And then later on, like hours later, I decided to go out back out to the dark room and put a, a tape label on the bottle with a date and to just to label the bottle what was in it. So I had some art tape and I wrote a little note and stuck it to the bottle. But I wasn't using any gloves. And then I was sitting out on the front porch and all of a sudden my hand started itching. And I looked at my hand and my fingers were all white, these two fingers. I go, oh crap. So I ran in the kitchen and started rinsing my hand under cold water. And then I put some salve on it and it disappeared and it was fine and there's been no problems. But that was simply residual chemical on the outside of the bottle that I failed to wipe off properly. And that was an 18% solution. That wasn't full strength. So again, be safe. Be aware that if there's any, any residual parts of this concentrated hydrogen peroxide, it, it, it will hang around and it could be a little risky. So my whole uh, emphasis here is you can do this. You can do it safely, just use common sense. So I'm really encouraged about this process and I really think it's gonna be fun, especially when I start doing eight by tens. And this is gonna be really fun. Well, this is Joe Van Cleve and this is my introductory foray into learning an alternative way of doing reversal processing of photo paper as a direct positive print exposed in camera, process safely at home, non-toxic and I hope you guys consider exploring this process. I'll have some notes down below in the video about how I process the paper, the concentrations and the uh, development times for each one of the steps in case you're interested. And until next time, you guys have yourselves a great day.